Greetings, all you moon people out there. I'm Dizdin, and I'm coming at you with another DuckTales 2017 episode review. This time, it's Season 2's Episode 17, titled, Whatever Happened to Donald Duck? A nice little play on the other um, episode, Whatever Happened to Della Duck, as, well... Once again, we're having a story on the moon, but this time around, it's Donald's turn to experience the wonders of Planet Moon. As Lunaris presents the criminal to his people, and, you know, just riles off against how Della is their enemy, and her brother has come as a spy to the moon, and it's only through the efforts of Pernumbra that he has been captured, with him very much putting her on the spot and promoting her to Captain Penumbra, much to her reluctance as she not quite down with the fact that they are lying to their people. Meanwhile, Dewey and Webby are on the hunt for the next big adventure, the next big mystery, the next big conspiracy, maybe even the one about Fooey, their fourth sibling, which is a nice little callback to the fact that um, in older Duck comics, there used to be times when the artist would mistakenly draw a fourth nephew, one usually coated in yellow or just maybe black when they were all wearing the same stuff. It was just a simple mistake because they were so used to the boys all being in the background. And the editor of that comics coined the name Fooey Duck, which is just such an interesting little Easter egg for this series. But Scrooge calls them out on this, saying that, hey, you can't just go around trying to find adventure. Adventure finds you. But when Huey mentions the fact that a postcard he sent to Donald seems to have been returned... Dewey and Webby are off on their next big adventure. Meanwhile, on the moon, we see that various different spears of Selene are being constructed. And we come to find out that in one month's time, Lunaris will launch his attack. As Donald is locked within space jail, basically. But as Donald goes about doing his own version of the Shawshank Redemption... Penumbra voices her concerns to Lunaris over the fact that their people aren't really combative in nature. They're simple moon folk. But Lunaris is determined and feels that with the help of Penumbra, they'll be able to make their way to Earth and dominate. And as Lunaris leaves, Penumbra confronts Donald and lets him know that she is not his enemy, and even calls herself, reluctantly, a friend to Della Duck. And he, she wants to ally with Donald in dismantling and finding a weakness into, in the spacecrafts so that they can save er, the Earth. Meanwhile, Dewey and Webby start to interrogate Huey in order to get information on the location of Donald and find out if possibly he might be in trouble. Strange intuition, these two. However, as Donald and Penumbra make their way to the hangar, they are spotted by two of the guards, with Penumbra just kind of saying, well, she's trying to get, takes out some aggression on the Earth, like, to get used to fighting an Earther, which, you know, helps to get the soldiers over their fear of Earth people. So it, we're reiterating the fact that these people are simple. They're not combative in nature. They actually fear the Earth people because they don't know what to expect from the Earth people. But we then find out that there is another intruder on the moon base, as Penumbra tells Donald to sneak through the vents, make his way past the soldier barracks, and into the hangar. 
Meanwhile, Dewey and Webby try to mail themselves to Donald to hopefully find out what's going on with them, only for Dewey to have forgotten to tape the bottom shut. But the mail person says that since they're looking for Donald Duck, she was actually looking for him as well because he didn't forward his new address and she dumps off various forms of mail, one of which seems to have a threatening note from a man called Jones. Now this is very interesting as Jones is actually a major character in DuckTales lore. Meanwhile, as Donald's making his way through the vents, he hears the announcement that the intruder was actually just a creature that made its way into the vents, who quickly finds Donald with his less than stellar luck as the, he manages to escape the creature only to wind up in the soldier barracks. Meanwhile, Dewey and Webby manage to track down Jones to the seedier part of Duckburg, with Webby posing as a junior woodchuck as Dewey infiltrates Jones's place and finds a file on Donald Duck and as the space creature manages to menace the moon people in their sleep, Donald does his best in a very slapstick moment to try and get these cr this creature away from them while rocking each of the moon people to sleep, only for the creature to grapple onto the back of his head, and while Donald starts to freak out, he is captured, oh, confronted by the moon soldiers only for the creature to crawl up his leg and into his shirt, causing him to spaz out, dodging enemy fire, and defeating all of the soldiers therein. Classic Donald move, much to the, you know, actual bewilderment of Penumbra, feeling that, oh, well, maybe he might be more formidable well, than he seems. But as Penumbra and Donald make their way into Lonaris's planning room, they end up finding a 3D model of the Earth in a secret chamber and come to find out that Lunaris has actually been planning this invasion of Earth a lot further in advance than we would have expected as he has information on a plethora of places that Scrooge and his gang have already been to specifically the uh, Seed Vault, Glomgold, Jin, Don Carnage. Like, this is the kind of stuff that you wouldn't just hear from Della. No, it goes a lot deeper than this. Lunaris has been on this path long before Della even arrived in their city as he seems to have extensive knowledge on the Duck family at large, Gizmo, um, you know, dispel just everyone. And, well, as Donald accidentally presses a button, it activates what seems to be a cannon with a bullet inside that would transport someone to the Earth. Unfortunately, it's not really safe for living beings. And, but, you know, Lu Penumbra realizes that that's why she, Lunaris, wanted the blueprints to the Spear of Selene to successfully make his way to the Earth. Meanwhile, as Dewey goes over the files and is soon joined by Webby, they do inquire what exactly Jones is after with Donald. What is his end goal? Why does he have this much information on Donald that no one really should have, only for them to be ambushed by Jones and locked in a closet? And as you know, Penumbra tells Donald, we gotta shut this down as quickly as possible. She notices that there's actually a live feed directly from Duckburg. And she finds the device that's actually receiving the signal. She tosses it over to Donald so that he can get to the highest point on the cannon to hopefully send a message to Earth to Scrooge to warn him only for her to be incapacitated by her captain's badge as Lunaris looms over Donald. You know, 
saying that, well, he kind of expected as much. Well, he is disappointed in Penumbra nonetheless. As Donald tries his best to make his way to get that signal out, Lunaris pursues him and blocks Donald's path at every turn with him declaring that while most enemies of Scrooge McDuck would actually try to go after him directly, Lunaris knows the true weakness of Scrooge, the boys. It take out the boys, and Scrooge's hope, his faith, will be shattered. And that was Lunaris's first mistake. So as Webby and Dewey try their best to make their way out of the closet, they do question exactly what is Jonesy's deal and who would have possibly hired him to get so much information on Scrooge, with it quickly being revealed that it's none other than Scrooge McDuck. I said information on Scrooge, information on Donald. It was apparently Scrooge as he enters the closet, although they come to find out it wasn't Scrooge's doing, in fact, Jones is actually Donald's therapist, his anger management therapist. And the fact that it's called Good Neighbor Therapy is very ironic, as this character is Neighbor Jones, a longtime kind of enemy to Donald in the Karl Barks comic, as he would often butt heads with Donald as they were not the best of neighbors, but to have him be Donald's anger management coach is actually hilarious, as Jones's anger was actually very much on par with that of Donald's in the comics, but he had actually been researching Donald's anger and giving him a place to actually let some of that frustration go. But we also come to find out that the letter that was sent that seemed very threatening was simply a bill for the anger management sessions. Although Dewey and Webby do question why Donald is still the most angry person probably in the known world. Jones explains that Donald has always kind of been very frustrated. And that, that frustration had always come from the fact that Donald seemed to think the world was out to get him. No one really understood him, and that always made him angry, irrationally so. However, there was something he learned to channel that anger into, namely, his want to protect the kids put under his charge. And should anyone ever threaten those kids, he would focus the brunt of all his rage right upon them. Which he starts to do against Lunaris to classic Donald freak out. Like that rage boost of adrenaline and energy and power just coming at Lunaris fast and heavy. But while at first Donald managed to gain the upper hand because Lunaris didn't think much of his combat abilities, Lunaris is still a trained warrior and manages to gain the upper hand yet again. And as Donald faces off with Lunaris, he realizes that a head-to-head -head battle will not go in his favor. So he tries to make his way to the top of the cannon to send out a signal warning about the invasion within one month's time. But Lunaris manages to break the device, and Donald realizes that his best course of action is to jump inside the one of the rockets in the cannon, and reluctantly, knowing that for normal living creatures, this is almost a death sentence, he blasts off with Lunaris choosing not to give pursuit as he feels that no possible living creature could survive that kind of a trip. With Donald being pushed to his breaking point as we see a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey as if he were traveling through a warp gate. 
<laughs> That's just how intense the strain is for Donald as the rocket starts to break up on re-entry. But through grit and sheer determination, through sheer rage, through sheer love, Donald does his best to hold on. As Penumbra thinks that Donald is the most daring man on all of two worlds. And as Scrooge leaves Jones's place, saying that if Jones wants a payment, he should probably direct it towards Donald. Dewey and Webby do kind of question why they weren't able to get in contact with Donald, hoping that he's alright, only for Scrooge to receive Donald's message. Unbelievably garbled because of the poor reception on the moon, with him f mostly just making out that Donald will be home in one month's time, as Donald's rocket re-enters the Earth's atmosphere, with him hopefully surviving the trip. Oh, incredibly good episode. It's been too long since we've just had straight Donald shenanigans. We don't really get that. A lot of the time, Donald is a kind of side character, a side note for the most part. Or he's not really having an adventure of his own. But here, it's 24-7 Donald time with him just having all of that bad luck that is all too noticeable for him. But it was so fun to see Donald just really going in and letting loose in some place outside of a season finale. Because man, that Shadow War stuff was fun, but this, this showdown between him and Lunaris was legendary. And Lunaris, man, this guy is shaping up to be a really intense antagonist. Who would have known that such an out-of-this-world plot would become from such a interesting character. Also, the introduction of Jones as Donald's anger management counselor, oh, the irony of that whole situation, but this team really knows how to implement Carl Barks originating characters into the current duck canon. Very fun. And that reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey, oh man, that's always good to see. You know, you gotta keep up with the classics. Hey, if you haven't watched it, definitely keep an eye out for that. It is very trippy. Also, the mention of Fooey Duck. And they even had in one of the, I think it was Norwegian or Danish comics. You know, the same comics that I mentioned had actually referenced what happened to Della Duck. That she was an astronaut, that she got lost in space. Those same comics were the ones that explained the four sibling Fooey Duck, that he was this amalgamation of the brain patterns of all three siblings, and he would just kind of blink in and out of existence from time to time. Man, those comics got really wild, but considering that this series draws upon so much duck lore, I... It would be interesting to actually have that plotline. Honestly, I could even see that plotline being fairly tragic. But honestly, we already kind of have an almost imaginary character in Lena the Spell. I, I wonder if they do it. Season 3 is looking to be a wild time with a lot of characters. So it's, it'll be interesting to see just how many characters weren't on that Comic Con poster with all that lineup going on with the various characters from Disney Afternoon. But uh, once again, a great episode, great Donald time, some fun stuff with Lou, um, Dewey and Webby. Not the best, but still fun nonetheless, and a good insight into the mentality of one Donald Duck, that he will fight to the death for his kids, because in the end, if you threaten his children, he will make you pay. You will be the one with all that bad luck. If you liked this video, leave me a like. If you didn't, feel free to leave me a dislike and tell me what I did wrong in the comment section below so I might better myself for future videos. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you don't miss out on the 
lead up to the end of season two. Honestly, Disney kind of threw me a curveball by just releasing all of this in succession. Like, guys, weekly releases. Like, binging is fine, but I would have more fun with this series if it was weekly. But, oh well. These episodes are fun to talk about with all their various Easter eggs sprinkled in. So join me, won't you? And if you want to find me on social media, just Google Dudes Diz Din. I am everywhere for better or for worse. And until the next video, just remember that caring is never wrong and anger can always be put in the right place if you have something you love strong enough to fight for it. Till next time, I'm Deuce Diz Din and I'm going to bed. Bye bye.